afternoon at 4 p.m., a bit after 4 p.m. in Central Europe, and it's time for our Space Cafe 33 Minutes with Matthias Wachter about departure or stillstand, why 2023 will be decisive for European space. And as always, we appreciate your participation and ongoing feedback, and we will learn and improve based on your feedback as well. I'm Torsten, the publisher of spacewatch.global. As you know, spacewatch.global is a Europe-based online platform for information in and about space and new space activities in a geopolitical context. And I would like to thank all our private and corporate supporters that showed their commitment to keep our independent journalism alive. And we really appreciate that. Thank you very much. I know many of you are already familiar with our website, our bi-weekly and daily newsletters and the Space Cafe podcast. The latest one just released this morning features Kevin O'Connell. We also have new exciting episodes of the Space Cafe radio, the short form podcast, for instance, with Anne van der Broek of Rewada Space Networks about the challenges on satellite filing. And we will release more of our ELA talks from last year with um, Andreas Schepers in German language later this week. However, worth your time. Our fan shop is also open for you. It's always open because it's on our website. It's just a click away to become a real space watcher. So, and if you've missed any of our previous web talks, we have an archive available on our webpage in the events section. And you also can find us on YouTube. My guest today is one of the most active voices in Germany when it comes to space, to new space in particular. A huge supporter of the sector, someone who is not shy to talk about critical points. And I'm very happy that he followed my invitation. Welcome to our Space Cafe today, Matthias, Matthias Wachter. So, just, to, in, hello, just to introduce you to the Two people in the audience that might not know you. Uh, Matthias is the managing director of the German New Space Initiative and head of international cooperation, security policy, raw materials, and space at the Federation of German Industry, BDI, und der Deutschen Industrie, as we say in German. The cross sector and cross industry initiative, the New Space Initiative, was founded end of 21, 2021. And Spacewatch.global reported on that, so you can uh, listen and read on that. And Matthias studied business administration, international relations in Germany, France, and the US. And he holds an MBA, an executive MBA from the, <laughs> the European School of Management and Technology, just on the other side of the road, I think, from, from your office. And he is a reserve officer of the German Armed Forces. Once more, Welcome, Matthias, to our show. So let's thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Torsten. It's a great honor and a great pleasure. My pleasure is mine. I hope you say that later on as well. It's still a ple pleasure when, when we're done with the question. So, ESA Ministerial, end of last year, was a huge success. At least we can read it and hear it in, in all the media. 16.9 billion euro, 17% increase. Everyone was happy with that. We interviewed Josef Aschbacher. Thereafter, we had Marco Parazani in our um, in your spot in December. It sounds like a done deal. Everyone was happy. You and the BDI has been very vocal towards the German government. So, are you happy with the results on the European level as well? First of all, uh, happy New Year to everyone. Uh, and again, it's a great honor and pleasure being on the show. Um, concerning the ESA ministerial, um, I think it was a, a, a step in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, the, um, uh, the amount and the budget, uh, it's, it, it will increase. That's, that's good for sure. Um, but we also have to take it into context. Yeah. And um, the, the increase, you mentioned it was like 17%. Uh, so that's that's good, but at the same time we are talking about an inflation in Europe at around eight to ten percent at the moment. So in real terms, the uh, increase 
is smaller than it sounds at the beginning. Number one. Uh, number two, if we compare our budgets to the US or China, uh, we have to admit that the, uh, the gap between the US and China on the one side and Europe on the other side in space is widening. So that's why I think, again, it's, it's good that the uh, budget got increased. Um, it's good that there is a commitment by the uh, ESA member countries for uh, uh, investing in ESA uh, in the next three years. But again, um, it could and it should have been more. Okay. Yeah, I think 19 billion were tabled. Um, so, so what are you missing if we stay on the European level for a moment before we dig then into Germany? What, what are you missing? Just more money. I think money is, is, um, is, is one important factor, for sure. Uh, but at the same time, it's not only about money, it's also about ambition. And it's about um, how we perceive space and um, what, we, what we want to achieve. And what I think what's lacking is uh, the big plan, the ambition. Where do we want to go as Europeans in space? For example, we have a European astronaut core, but we don't have European spaceships. Yeah. So we need other partners um, to bring our astronauts into space. And if we really want to be number two or number three when it comes to space globally, I think we need to invest in our own spaceship so that European astronauts can fly into space uh, with European spaceships on European rockets. And that's one example uh, which I'm missing. I see. OK. I think we, there's, there's room for more later on. Let's focus on Germany. Germany signed 3.512 billion euro, 20.8%, followed by France, 18.9%, Italy 18.2% and the UK 11.2%. Four countries make it up to almost 70% or 69.1% to be concrete. What does it mean for Germany? Did all your dreams that, that you had, your expectations to, towards the government came true? And maybe just as a side note, the press, I mean, my colleagues, reported 4 billion versus a sign 3.5 that we can find. Can you explain it to me? Uh, I think it's very difficult to, 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 okay, to then explain. We and, so. and, no, no, but, but uh, it's, it, if you look at it um, at the end of the day, it's, it's not so complicated. Yeah. So I, I think what happened is that Germany signed in today's terms 3.5 billion. Yeah, and um, the, the government, or at least some parts of the government said, hey, at a whole, we are going to invest 4 billion. Yeah, so where comes the difference from? The difference comes from, I believe, because if you, um, the, uh, the, the, the investments you're doing with ESA, they are um, inflation adjusted every year. So uh, taking into account that we have eight to 10% of inflation at the moment, it's highly likely that after three years, this 3.5 billion will effectively be 4 billion. Yeah. And I think for some politicians, 4 billion sounds better than 3.5. Okay. Uh, but at the end, I think um, we have to be honest. Today, we signed 3.5 billion. That's a, a good number, uh, no doubt about that. Um, but um, uh, again, um, if we talk about 4 billion, then you would also have to talk about a similar increase um, with the investments all the other countries are doing as well. And then it's, it, it's a zero sum game, I would say. Yeah. And, and so I, and we I, I have think 19 billion in total. Exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, 3.5, that's the real number, I would say. It's all in all ESA documents. And that's the number I think we, we always should uh, relate to. Um, when it comes to your question, what, what are we missing? Um, as I mentioned before, I think ambition, yeah, 
uh, I think Europe needs to be more ambitious in space. We have the situation that we heavily relied on uh, our cooperation with Russia and the Russian Soyuz rockets. This is gone now. I would say, God bless, it's over, yeah, so that we don't have to deal with a, a criminal regime uh, uh, anymore. But the result is um, that we can't use Soyuz rockets anymore. And uh, in 2021, we had 13 rocket launches, six with European-made Ariane and Vega rockets, and seven Soyuz. And these seven Soyuz rockets are now gone. And uh, the, the consequence is that at the moment, uh, Europe has temporarily lost its access to space. Why that? Because Ariane 5 is, uh, is running out. There will only be two more launches and then Ariane 5 will be history. Uh, Vega is not launching at the moment. There are some technical challenges and the seven Soyuz rockets, they are gone. So if you, uh, as a European government or a European company at the moment, you want to launch with a European launcher, uh, it's not going to happen because there is no, 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 no available, yeah? And uh, so, so I think we really need to put an emphasis on our access to space, and we need to um, increase the resilience of our access to space because it is so crucial. I mean, we see every day in Ukraine how important space assets are, and um, we need to protect our assets, and we need to be able to quickly launch new assets in a case of emergency. And that's exactly what we are not able uh, to do at the moment. So I think we need to focus more on this segment and focus more means for me, more intra-European competition. There are new companies coming up uh, with uh, uh, privately funded smaller rockets. And I think we should give them a fair chance to compete for institutional contracts. And we should also invest more in them like the US is doing by giving them contracts and uh, letting them participate so that we get a more diverse European launcher segment, that we have more intra-European competition and that we can um, rely on European rockets when it comes to access to space. And that's one thing I am, I'm missing a bit uh, in, the, uh, in the last um, ESA ministerial, we um, had a small so-called micro-launcher competition. Yeah, that was very successful. And I would have liked to see a micro-launcher competition 2.0 um, to strengthen this segment. Okay, so with, with this new money, um, you mentioned the micro-launcher um, competition. I mean, there was a second round, or if I'm not mistaken, where RFR got then awarded. But it was still on the on the German level, not on the European level, if I'm not not mistaken. So, but aren't we doing enough? I mean, you you mentioned the gap between the Europe and the US in one of the posts, and and earlier here as well. So, um, I mean, again, with this four billion or three point five billion, we can do a lot, and it seems we do we do a lot. We have an agile. A new space initiative that that you are heading. We have an agile, I think, one hundred forty-ish uh, uh, um, new space companies in 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 Germany. So, as you said, it sounds we are on the right track. But what else? Um, Help me. I fully agree. Uh, a, a lot has happened in the last couple of years, and. Uh, like you've mentioned, we here in Germany, we have a very dynamic new space ecosystem. We have uh, many new and very innovative companies popping up. And uh, that, that's very, very good. Uh, but this ecosystem exists because of um, entrepreneurs who started companies, who took risks, and uh, because of private money, venture capital money, um, who invested in this field. And now I think we are at a critical point because the ecosystem um, reached um, um, an, an ordinary size. And the question now, where do we go from here? 
Yeah. Um, do we continue to expand um, or um, will there be setbacks? And uh, in order to, to grow, it's important that we, as a society, but also as the German government, change our perception of space. It's not only, I would say, about space tourism and flying to moon or Mars. Yeah, it's about making life better on Earth, being more sustainable. Space is a part of the solution for more sustainability on space on, on, on Earth. And if you if you let that sink in, uh, you 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 can and you should um, invest more in this field and areas which are not using space data anymore uh, at the moment can and should uh, use that more. Yeah, and at the moment when we look at the German government, um, we have the, uh, the the Ministry of Economics, which is responsible for space but we almost don't have any cooperation when it comes for example to the agriculture ministry yeah so they are not using this type of technology and i think that that's something that that needs to change uh, we need to think it more um, holistically we need to think it more government-wide and not only the ministry of economics needs to do space all other ministries as well and it's not only for doing so for the companies but also making the work of the ministries more efficient and better because using these new technologies and space data it'll, it will help them become better more innovative uh, uh, in, in in their services and that's something we uh, we would like to see more and where we want to see a change space needs to be an, 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 an government overarching topic as a whole and not only something the Ministry of Economics is doing. I, I fully agree with everything you said. Um, but it sounds for me we are calling for more money from the government to do whatever we want to do in space because we say that is a value add for you, that is a benefit. I mean, 80% of the ESA budget or is coming back to us to into the country. So out of this 1.3 billion per year, take 80% uh, 80 into it, a billion, 1.1 billion or so, is coming back to Germany, into the German market. Taxpayers' money via ESA, via DLR, into back to Germany. So um, <laughs> it's a new space business it's 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 a space business but there are other players that should finance that as well not just the ministries not the not mm. the governments mm. so how how can you support the initiative to find customers in the real world and not just in the government because just relying on the government i think is it's it's one-eyed no i um i agree uh, uh, we I both agree. agree on each other that's cool <laughs> Just relying on the government would be um, uh, would be short-sighted. Um, what what we are trying to do with the new space initiative is bringing together new space and non-space. Yeah, mm -hmm. BDI, our umbrella organization, represents one hundred thousand manufacturing companies, and we try to link them with. Uh, the new space ecosystem and new space companies, because we firmly believe that using space data, space generated services, etc., will help the non-space sector uh, to become more efficient, more sustainable, and and help them being from a business side more successful. Yeah, so that. I fully agree that needs to happen, and that's something we are very hard working on, and we want to promote that. But this is also true for the government. Yeah, I think we need um, to change the perception. It's not about government is using taxpayer money and it's throwing it in. What we would like to see is using the taxpayer money more efficient. Yeah, in a more efficient way, and the best and efficient way we believe using it 
is using it for contracts and mm -hmm. purchasing services, handing out contracts, and even if it's just smaller uh, uh, contracts to companies because um, the, the government is purchasing services which they can also use, uh, which is helping them. So it's not a subsidy, it's like purchasing a service. And on the other side, companies benefit from even small um, contracts uh, with the government because it makes them more attractive for additional investment and additional investors. And so it's a win-win situation. And my main point is we need to use our money more efficient and we need a system change uh, where the government is primarily uh, acting as a customer and is purchasing services and space generated data. I see. All right. We come to the to the space strategy or the German space strategy a bit later. So, but I mean, let's stay on the European uh, view. Europe has two major focus areas, focus points at the moment: energy and defense, and that's very clearly stated uh, by the by the Commission. And both are areas where space can play a role. But does it? Does the German industry has their feet in in that as well? I mean, we do have defense uh, companies uh, that, that are active, but do they have the space component as well? I mean, you have the oversight. Um, first of all, again, if you look what happens in Ukraine, I mean, you clearly see how important space and satellites are. The, the, one of the reasons why Ukraine still exists and is able to defend itself against Russia is because they have an uh, information edge over Russia. And they have this edge because they get Western satellite data, pictures, Earth observation data. They are using Starlink for communication, etc. So that's, uh, from a military perspective, it's crucial. and. Uh, the war in Ukraine, I would say, is the first war, which already kind of is already kind of a Star Wars. The war also started in space because the day or a few hours before the Russian ground attack started on the 24th of February 2022, Russia tried to attack uh, Viasat satellites and Viasat ground stations in order to. Um, to lock uh, um, uh, Ukraine out of the, uh, the the global internet and make it impossible for Ukraine um, to stay connected and communicate with the rest of the world. Uh, uh, God bless that, that that didn't work out, but it showed um, the dimension and the importance the aggressor um, emphasized on, on, on space and space capabilities. Yeah. Um, so it's crucial. Number one, number two, you, you ask, do, do, do Europe, do we have the expertise? Do we have the companies? I would say we have the expertise, we have the companies, but we are not using it, um, as we should. Yeah. For example, the German military has five satellites. Yeah. They have five uh, uh, Sara Lupe, that's the name of the system, Earth Observation Satellites, plus two uh, communication satellites. Yeah, um, that's, that's not a lot. Yeah, and if one of these satellites gets knocked out, uh, the, the German military really is, is, is running into trouble. Yeah, so um, military planners in the West, in Europe and Germany, need to put a bigger emphasis on capabilities in space. Um, and I would again say we have the expertise, we have the knowledge, uh, the companies, we can realize that. But on the other side, the, the government also needs to put more emphasis on that and uh, strengthen its space capabilities. As you just mentioned, Zalupa, um... One one comment, and I know the data are, are still, uh, or the, the resolution data and so on of Saluka are still classified. We see in the mainstream media since the beginning of the war, Maxar pictures, not a European satellite, Maxar pictures. 
are in high resolution, 30 centimeter resolution and more, where we see the convoys, where we can see the destroyed bridges, and they're going to the main public media. So, I mean, my, my honest question is, can Germany even be with our infrastructure that we have, and I don't talk about tanks here at the moment, be a trusted and capable partner for the European space sector? I think we, we can and we should, yeah. Uh, but we are, I think we are not using our capabilities and, 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 and the experience and, and the, the expertise we have in a, in, in, in a way we, we, we could, yeah. And um, we, are, we are lacking behind in this field. Um, um, I think definitely Germany is a, is a reliable partner. We are sharing data with our partner. We are also sharing data uh, with, with, with the Ukrainians, uh, that's for sure. Um, but still, if you compare it uh, to the capabilities uh, the Americans have, there is a huge gap. And you could say, of course, there is a gap. America will always be, uh, will have a technological edge, et cetera. Um, but th this doesn't fit to the, let's say, self-proclaimed uh, position as Europe being one of the space leaders. And we are, we, we, we've talked about European sovereignty uh, a lot in the last 10 years, and now in, at this crucial point of time, uh, we, we, we see again that we are dependent on American data, on American infrastructure and uh, American leadership. And um, uh, it's good that we have the Americans. If it's good that we, that we have this close cooperation and that we are in this together, but imagine what would happen if, for example, there would be another guy in the White House with a different political agenda, we would really run into troubles. And we always need to also kind of prepare and plan for the worst case scenario. And I think that's not what happens in space at the moment. Absolutely. I mean, uh, last year uh, during the Prague Security Conference, I spoke with the uh, space commanders, including Michael Trout. And, um, and I learned from him that Germany can now participate on the data of the big five, of the five eyes. So, so that five eyes plus two. So we are allowed. So we are in this in this circle. So they 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 give us a place on the table. I mean, how cool is that? That we can use their data at the moment. Another topic. You, you don't have to comment on that. No, I, I mean, space is always also about collaboration. Yeah. yeah. And and we as Europeans, uh, we we need to collaborate with each other because without collaboration we won't be able to let's say achieve and realize really big and ambitious projects and we also need to work together uh, uh, and, and collaborate with our american friends when it comes to uh, going forward to the moon uh, etc but we also need to bring something to the table and i think what we are bringing to the table in relation to what the others bring to the table it's a bit tiny. Okay. Could be more. Let's try to go more on a, on a positive note. I hope we achieve that. Yesterday, I recorded a Space Cafe radio with a French company. Founded seven years ago or eight years ago, 2015. And I asked them why they have done that in France. And they said they got the support. They got the human resources in France. And they got the funding. And now they expand into the US. I said, what a wonderful story. Is that a story that our 140-ish Earth-based startups companies in Germany also can yeah, say? Do they get the support they need? I mean, they are organized, many of them, I think 70 right now, are organized in, in the new space initiative. So I think you're on the edge, you, you hear their problems, their, their challenges they had before and they have now. Again, it's an, it's an amazing development uh, which has happened in the last couple of years in um, the development of this new space ecosystem um, uh, here in Germany. And we have very successful and very innovative 
uh, new space companies. And um, um, we can and we should be very proud uh, uh, of them. And if they have the opportunity to expand their business to the US, I would say uh, that's a huge success, yeah, because the uh, US market is very competitive, but it's also the, the largest space market on earth. And if you make it there, um, it's uh, it's marvelous, yeah. So uh, that's that's definitely something good, but it also comes a bit with a let's say um, with a challenge, and the challenge could be if you look at companies like Rocket Lab, yeah, they started as a New Zealand-based New Zealand company, yeah, and in order to have access to the U.S. market. Uh, they they had to transfer their headquarters to the US. And nowadays they are de facto an American company. Yeah, and they did that because they wanted to have access to US uh, launch contracts. And 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 that's something um, we 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 need to to take uh, uh, in mind. Uh, first of all, it's good expanding globally being successful in the US, but we as Europeans, we also need to make sure that our home market is so attractive mm -hmm. that these companies stay here, that they also invest here and they can and that they can be successful um, on a on a global on a global scene uh, based as European companies. I know it's now a provocative question, but what does the current government do uh, to support space? I mean, we saw, as you mentioned before, the um, the new space, uh, the, the micro launcher um, competition, round one, round two. These are all they're harvesting from the the fruits from the from the last terms. So, what is on that table right now? Is there anything what is worth to mention? Um, I think they are putting a. Um... Um, a huge emphasis on on, on everything uh, which is related to uh, climate protection and sustainability. Uh, I think in general um, that's smart, yeah, because you need these expertise uh, and, and 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 space um, as part of the solution for these global challenges. So you 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 can't fix it. Uh, you can't fix climate change if you don't have precise data. So um, it it makes a lot of sense what the government is doing by focusing on that. I think it also makes a lot of sense that they um, focus on new space and commercialization. So they want that they want to leverage private investments and and support um, and new space companies. Um, so, so, so the question is not, are they on the right path? I would say yes. Could they be a bit more ambitious? Definitely. Um, and what we what we also need to do, yeah, is we we need to talk about the strategic dimension, and we need to talk about um, uh, the, the the bigger things. Yeah. Uh, for example, what's going to happen after the International Space Station? Is coming to their uh, life end. Yeah, um, I, I don't see a debate about that. Yeah, um, uh, but but we we need to talk about that because the cooperation with Russia is challenging. It's still in place when it comes to the space station, mm -hmm. uh, but the space station is uh, is old, and at some point it will be too old uh, to to continue to run it. So there, there needs to be kind of a replacement. The Americans are working on private space station, private space stations, which get also uh, supported by the government uh, with mm -hmm. various, various tools. And the Europeans, we don't have a clue at the moment. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, and I think we need to, to start thinking about that. What's going to happen after ISS? And where is our place? And I think that should be a bit higher on the agenda than it is now. I want to dig into it and, and ask 
on the climate change side, how many of our space companies, companies working in the space sector, the 150 or 40 ish, how many of them are doing climate change things? I mean, we had NMAPSAT with a big uh, uh, um, celebration uh, um, launching last year and doing cool stuff, but it's an it's an DLR satellite, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we see the launchers, we see small satellite uh, um, uh, manufacturers, we we see many of these component uh, companies, but I mean, they might pay into the climate change debate or, or the climate change solution debate, but um, the one company, the GHG sat or so, um, we don't have, or I don't see them. But I would like to ask you about the, the strategy, the strategic component, and we alluded to that already. Do you have an insight where we are on that? Uh, the, the German space strategy, the government said we are working on that and there are round tables or there were also in a uh, public um, uh, event um, end of last year. I mean, it seems at least for me, maybe it's just us, but press does not have a place on the table here. So I'm asking you where we are on that. Is that promising? I think we are in the early stage. We are uh, at the beginning. I, I think it makes a lot of sense to update the current strategy because so much changed in the last couple of years, so much changed in the last 12 months. And I we, we need to, to update our plans and strategies towards this new reality. Um, so what the government already did, they they, they reached out to the companies, they uh, had uh, a stakeholder meetings and get together. I have the impression they are listening very carefully uh, to the uh, companies in the new space ecosystem uh, about what, what the ecosystem needs and what's, what's important. So I think that's, that's a very good approach. Uh, uh, Time-wise, I think the goal is um, to 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 present something at the end of this year yeah okay. because what the government also wants to do for the first time and they're working on that right now is they want to um, uh, write a national security strategy and the goal is to present that national security strategy at the munich security conference in february and yeah. all other strategies um shall somehow plug in into uh, this new national security as the overarching uh, strategy so the government needs to finish its national security strategy first and then they can finalize the other the other strategies yeah there, so for example there's also a raw materials strategy coming up and not only a, a new space strategy so we are talking about a lot of strategies right now and um, so I think um, we, we will we will see and learn more uh, about the, the space strategy uh, uh, at the end of the year. At the moment, I have to say um, I'm very optimistic. Uh, we had a, a good uh, a participation event with with Anna Christmann, the Air and Space Coordinator, and uh, so yeah, I'm very positive when it comes to the space strategy. Great. Um, just to repeat what you said, you said the, we are expecting our, um, an, our security, national security strategy, and all the other strategies will then uh, dock into that? Is that yes. Okay. Just yeah. want to under, see the so and, and, and that's kind of a revolution in Germany. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we didn't have a national security strategy in the last 60 years. And uh, we are doing that now for the first time. And we are doing that in a situation uh, where we have a, a hot war going on in Europe. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the situation, it's, it's, it's much more dramatic than, than, than in the last decades. Uh, and uh, they, they are prioritizing these strategies so high that it shall be the umbrella strategy of the new government and all other sub strategies need to be aligned uh, uh, with the uh, the new uh, national security strategy. Okay, got it, got it. I know we are running over time already, but I think the, the conversation is so 
at least for me, interesting or and important that I would like to spend a few more minutes before we coming then to, to the to the question. So, what can we expect from 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 you this year, from the New Space Initiative initiative this year, from the BDI in terms of space this year? Um, we um, we have so new, of... new space breakfast next week. Yes. Yeah, yeah. we have. Uh... The next new space breakfast coming up next week. Uh, uh, we uh, we are partners of the Munich Security Conference, so we will have uh, various bigger and smaller um, events in Munich at the Munich Security Conference, where we want to stress the importance, the strategic importance of space. Um, we um, we will have. Um, a, a Weltraum Congress, a space conference at the end of this year. Yeah, big event coming up uh, with, I would say, 600 plus participants. Uh, the last uh, uh, space congress was uh, before Corona. And uh, uh, now we are back and that will be a big event and it will be before the space summit. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we will um, uh, come up with some ideas. Yeah, uh, at, at, at the last space conference uh, we did, we had this idea and the plan of launching rockets in the North Sea. And this is uh, progressing um, very, very good and fast at the moment. And uh, you can expect uh, uh, some, uh, some, some stuff coming up at our next uh, big space conference, the Weltraum Congress at the end of this year. And uh, do, do our we daily have a day business to, to announce already no, because it's no. not okay. Good. Good. Bernie, <laughs> no, so not stay yet. tuned. No, 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 not yet. So stay tuned. Um, and and what we are also doing, and that's kind of our daily business. Um, we want we can we will continue to bring together new space and non space. Yeah, uh, bring it in the the automotive sector when it's when we talk about. Um, uh, autonomous driving, all the horizon uh, uh, updates, etc. Yeah, so I think there's huge potential, especially huge potential for German industry because we are so manufacturing heavy and orientated, and there's a big link, big opportunities for working together with space and using space and space based data, and that's what we are going to promote at the Hannover Messe, Hannover Trade Fair, and other occasions. So lots of things coming up. Great, and we will follow that, uh, of course. I would like to pick at least one or two of the, the questions because one one block here we didn't touch, and I think that's very important. Um, Valentin, thank you very much, Valentin Eder from Space Analysis in Vienna, um, comes with a question: Do BDI has a resilience of the space services on their agenda? And I would like to put it into context. Today, many of us received the um newsletter of share share my space um and we could read on page eight nine that in december last year we had some cl close proximity uh, um not maneuvers um occasions um of one meter of three meter of six meter in space with the starling satellites so that is i would say very very concerning if two satellites or two objects are coming as close as one meter, if these numbers are, are correct. So does BDI has this or on, or does your team has that on your radar as well? Um, you are touching a very important uh, issue. Uh, space is becoming ever more crowded and especially low earth uh, uh, orbits are becoming more and more crowded. And um, this is becoming increasingly challenging, yeah, because like you mentioned, um, the, the, the risks are increasing significantly that two space objects hit each other, then there will be space debris, and uh, then it, it, it will turn into a point where it uh, will almost be impossible uh, to, 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 to use space, to use low Earth orbit, to launch rockets, because there's so much space debris. So we really need to address that issue. And um, we need to 
uh, address that on an international level as well. Yeah, so that new satellites um, which are coming up um, uh, are built in a way that they have an automatic or automatic deorbiting, for example. Yeah, uh, so that there is no so that we don't generate additional space debris. That's very important. And we also need to, uh, to look um, uh, within Europe, yeah. And I think Europe should set an example here and move forward uh, with policies um, that um, support um, using space and especially the low Earth orbit in a sustainable way. Um, um, and I think we need to act very quickly, yeah, because there are uh, predictions to say that until 2030, there will be 15,000 plus new satellites coming up. And, and if you imagine these are all, or most of them are placed in the low Earth orbit, then it gets really crowded there and the problems uh, really uh, increase. So international initiative, and Europe should uh, uh, go go ahead and, and set a, a positive example to address that issue. But I think for that, we also have to exchange data with our friends in Europe, France, Italy, Spain, and, and, and Germany. And I think that's still lagging. But I would say these are other topics, and I would like to uh, continue the conversation with you on the uh, space security side to, to a later stage, because we are running out of time here. But here, thank you very much. For, for your time today. Uh, and thank you very much everyone in the audience for, for your participation, for the, for the question you put in. And I'm very sorry that um, we, we couldn't go, go through them, but there will be another occasion. And with that, back to Elena. Thank you, Thorsten, and thank you, Matthias. Uh, before we say goodbye, let me remind you of our upcoming events. So I and Thorsten will be next week in Brussels and they're reporting from the EU Space Conference. Uh, so if you find them, say hi. On the 26th of January uh, at 7 a.m. in Europe and 5 p.m. Um, in Australian uh, time, uh, one for the early birds in Europe, uh, we have our Space Cafe Low Breakfast with Stephen Freeland. Um, later that day at 8 p.m. Central European time, uh, join us for uh, the 60th Space Bar by Astro Agency. On the 31st of January at 4 p.m., uh, again, uh, join us for another episode of our Space Cafe 33 Minutes with. And on the 1st of February at 4 p.m., we have our Space Cafe Black Ops by Dr. Emma Gatti. Don't miss that one, absolutely. And don't miss uh, neither on the 2nd of February at 6 p.m., our Space Cafe Italy again with Dr. Emma Gatti in Italian. Uh, as usual, all events are going to be online on Eventbrite. <clears throat> Sorry, and we would like to hear your feedback, so please check in with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And don't forget to sign up for our daily and our bi weekly newsletters. And if you like to treat yourselves with something special, become a Space Watcher today or help us in the supporter program and get one of those fantastic mags. Thank you, Matthias, for the insightful talk and for being our guest. And thanks again to the entire team behind the scenes for doing this great job week by week again. I hope you always stay safe and healthy. Thank you, our audience, for joining us. I hope to see you in the next week's in upcoming events. In the meantime, visit our website and, so, and follow us on social media. And don't forget, become a space watcher. Bye. Thank, Thank you very much. much.